Welcome to Destination Beer. We are doing another Beers With segment, and we are in Denver. Uh, this is uh, the Craft Brewers Conference uh, happening right now and uh, taking advantage of a wonderful opportunity to enjoy the food and the beer scene here. We are actually at the Kitchen Denver right now, and I am joined by one of my favorite people, especially one of my favorite beer people in the whole world, Miss Julia Hurst from the Craft Brewers Association, the Craft Beer Program Director. Yep. So, Julia, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. It's great to be here in Denver. The kitchen. Love it. Nice choice. Right. And uh, happy to see you. Yeah, I'm having a great time. Craft Brewers Conference is just rolling. There's so many great people here. There's great beers here, great learning. I mean, it, it's such an amazing time to be here. So a lot of, lot of great things going on. Um, we, of course, are drink, we're, this is the Beers With segment. So let's talk about what we're drinking. And we chose the same thing. What are we drinking? A little uh, Pliny. Elder. Just great. You don't you don't see a keg of this sitting around every day, and to have it in Colorado is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Well, we don't unfortunately get uh, Russian River beers in uh, Texas, so anytime I enter a market where I can find them, I definitely take advantage. Uh, obviously, you know a lot about this beer. This beer has basically got a cult following. Yeah. Give us an, uh, some insight why you think that's so. Well, I mean, you could talk about just this one specific beer, or you could talk about other beers that also have cult followings that are made by craft brewers in the U.S. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on now of people seeking out these gems. And I think the point is, is that small producers aren't making things in mass. This is a coveted beer to get, and when you get it, you go for it. And when you don't, um, when you can't find it, if you are seeking it out, you might get lucky in another market. So the point is, is these little gems are available in different pockets of the country, and they're to be appreciated when you have them and when you don't, you know, drink as in Rome and, and enjoy something else. Right. And that's a fair point because, you know, down in Texas, we have our gems. Um, you've got various breweries like St. Arnold's that put out Divine Reserve. You've got Carbach that does the Fun Series. You have Freetail that does uh, La Muerte. Uh, and those are the gems there. And, of course, you go up north, you've got, you know, the Hop Slams and uh, the Dark Lords. Right. So it's kind of, it's kind of, you're right. It's kind of cool to look at what craft breweries are doing in a whole. And speaking about craft breweries, we've been learning a lot, you know, in this week about how great craft beer is doing right now. The growth, we're up to 8% of the market when it was 6% a couple of years ago. And the decline of beer overall is still happening. What's happening with craft beer? Well, I think craft beer and the U.S. beer scene is putting beer on the map again for our country. And we now are the largest destination for beer because we finally had that cultural shift. And that cultural shift to me is a localization of beer movement. So you've got innovation. You've got expansive of styles. I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here 10 years ago discussing this IPA. So innovation has brought new beer styles and um, just new interest to the beer category. I love to say no longer does a light American lager satisfy every beer lover's beer occasion. Um, the market is uh, you know, shrinking a little bit in barrelage for the large brewers. They're paying attention, changing their game and evolving, which is to be applauded. And the bottom line is, is we are now a more flavorful and diverse beer culture than we ever were. And that is going nowhere but up. So it's super exciting times to be a beer lover in the U.S. Yeah, and, and that leads, of course, to so many more breweries that are opening up. We learned that there are 1,700 new breweries, craft breweries, in planning. And that's on top of the 2,800 that are actually running and producing beer around the country. 1,700, Julia? Well, we even announced at the press conference today after the general session that as of March of this year, it's 1,800 plus in planning. And so one of the questions raised was, you know, how, how many breweries is ever too many? And we will come right back and explain there's 4,000 some odd wineries in the U.S. Um, if we had as many breweries today as we did in the late 1800s in the U.S., based on population then and now, we should be able to support 10,700 breweries. So the marketplace will decide, um, yeah. It's, it's a little squeezed at retail, and, and, and they're having to change their game. Um, but we are sitting in an establishment such as the Kitchen in Denver to actually show that you can put beer in a fine dining environment and have it on such an enjoyable level as part of our food culture. So we're going nowhere but up, and yet we're still going up because we're gone more flavorful beyond just that light American lager. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we've also seen today – um, with some awards and uh, just some of the brewers that you'll see uh, here at CBC, women in craft beer, it's exploding 
uh, with how many women are getting into the craft beer uh, production. Um, we, we're going to talk to Kyla here soon. Um, she is uh, the local expert for beer at here at the kitchen. Um, and it's so great to see women in force in an industry that so many people would attribute to being male driven. I think that's awesome to hear you emulate. And I mean, I approach beer not as a woman, but as a, a beer lover, you know. Um, but what you point out is true. It was recognized on stage today with Terry Farendorf taking one of the major three awards that was awarded today um, and for her work in the industry as well as evolving Pink Boots as an organization. Sure, beer was a guy's drink. It was marketed as such. And again, back to Light American Lager, I think that was the target from many domestic and global breweries was let's market this to males in their young 20s to early 30s and that's who we're going after and frankly some of that is still going on but what craft beer has done to me is be much less gender specific and more inclusive in just marketing it as a beverage as opposed to a gender specific one it's all about flavor in the glass to me and just women just as men are into flavor so it's a, it's a no-brainer and i'm glad you said that because we've seen some articles uh written in the last year where People were talking about, you know, that beer, beers that women love and several women in the industry, several women that write, um, that was exactly what they came out and said. They said, we don't treat what we drink or what we eat as a woman. We, we just, we, we do what we like. This is what we enjoy. And that leads into something you mentioned on stage, the passion of the craft brewer, the passion of the craft beer drinker, and what is involved in being in this industry and what drives you. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to see that passion in people. And that's what it takes. I mean, you talk about the 1800 breweries and planning. It's not the easiest thing to do. If anyone out there listening wants to get into brewing, you should realize you're getting into the most highly of taxed of highly regulated industries with many barriers to market. And the smaller you are, the harder it is. So I think it's very important to pay attention to that. And the passion is what will you know bring you through. I, I went to a technology conference and spoke at that. And literally the focus of the conference was similarities between the technology world and the craft brewing world and what it came down to at the end of the day it took a whole day of sessions to really boil it down is that in technology and you know there's many exceptions it's about money and what's going to carry the day on that side but when you look at brewing sure it's about money and keeping your business going and your bucket full but it's also about the passion and if you're not passionate that's going to show in your product and people won't support you yeah absolutely well as most of you know we've had julia on uh, this show quite a few times and when you put julia and i in the same vicinity it, the conversation is going to gravitate towards food and beer, and uh, we love. Obviously, we're we're both passionate about uh, what we eat, what we drink, and bringing those pairings and those flavors out. So, coming up next, uh, we are going to have Kyla join us. We're going to bring in some dishes uh, from the kitchen, and we are going to show you guys some really amazing pairings with some really amazing American craft beers. We'll be right back. <laughs> 